Hey guys, I wanted to hop on and share a prophetic update that I feel led from the Lord to share with you today. It's a rather um, sobering word, but also an encouraging word for those of you who may be getting into fear or anxiety with the things that are going on. So this is kind of a twofold um, message. Um, I didn't know I was going to come on and do this, but I feel heavy in my spirit to do it, so I'm going to release it to you. At the beginning of the year, um, the, the prophecy that the Lord began to give me about America, you can go back and watch that video, um, was a, a Times and Seasons prophecy that we are stepping into um, the time of Belshazzar. And if you don't know about the story of Belshazzar in the Bible, he defiles the vessels of the temple. He um, has a feast for a thousand of princes. It says, the Bible says um, princes and, and just different people. Has this big elaborate party. And while they're there, he calls for his men or servants to bring in the gold and the silver vessels from the temple. And they, at the party, begin to drink wine out of them. And so he just defiles the Lord by using these vessels and when God gave me that prophecy at the beginning of the year he said the writing is on the wall and so when Belshazzar did that he sees um uh, it says uh, the Bible says the hand of a man began to write on the wall and it says the scripture says in Daniel 5 mean mean tekel ufarsin ufarsin <laughs> however you say that um, and then they call in Daniel the prophet who interprets this and he tells Belshazzar he says you've been weighed in the balances you've been found wanting and now you are being judged and that's what the Lord was telling Belshazzar you have been weighed and you have been measured and now I'm bringing judgment upon you for what you have done so this is a very sobering word because with so much going on with inflation, with gases and all of that, I've been talking to, to God and asking him, you know, Lord, I, I feel in my spirit something's fixing to take place. What's going on? And when the God gave me that word at the beginning of the year about Belshazzar, he said, the writing is on the wall. We are in the time of Belshazzar. So the Lord's brought that word back into my spirit that his judgment is coming to the nation of America. Because we have defiled his word, his word, we are trying to make unrighteous things and sin okay. We are trying to legalize and normalize sin, and they are abominations. This nation has done things that the Lord, the word, the word of the Lord says are abominations, and we are trying to not only normalize them in society but legalize them. And so judgment is coming to this nation because we have done such things. So not only do we need to be praying for the Christian leaders in this nation, but we need to be praying that people's hearts return back to the Father. So many people are changing the word of God, Christians included, to fit their circumstances, to make it sound okay that they can live in sin and do the things that they do and that it's okay but it's not. You are being deceived. This, the principality that the Lord showed me that is covering the nation of America, that I shared in that prophecy at the beginning of the year, I told you guys you can go back and watch that, is the spirit of deception. This is a specific principality in the demonic kingdom that is covering America and deceiving many, including Christians. And that's what Jesus said in Matthew 24 would take place. He said that many would be deceived, even the elect. Even the elect. So even people that know the word are being deceived. That's why it's so important to guard our eyes, our ears, our hearts. To stay in the word and in constant communion with the Holy Ghost. So that he can lead God and direct our paths. And direct us when maybe things are trying to manipulate us or deceive us and pull us away. So this is a very important word for us to, to um, mull on right now as we see things going down that this is the judgment of God coming to this nation 
So what do we as Christians need to do? As again, I just said pray. Pray for the leaders. Pray for um, people that their hearts will be turned back to God. The scripture says, going back to what I was just saying about being Christians being deceived, the word says not to add to or take away that there um, is a specific judgment for those people, that they also have their place in the lake of fire. God will bring his judgment upon you. You will have your place with the unrighteous people. You can be a Christian all day long, but if you add to the word of God or you take away from it, you interpret it to say something to suit your circumstances or your sin, to make your sin sound okay, the Bible says that you will have your place with the unrighteous. So you've got to be careful with that. Don't add to or take away. If the scripture says that fornication is wrong, and I've been there before I brought my heart back to God, it's wrong. Okay? Go read Romans 1. I have a Hebrew Bible for those that want to contest this. And it says nothing different than the King James Version. Go read Romans 1. It tells you everything that the Lord considers to be unclean and unrighteous. Fornication. Women turning to one another in lust. Men turning towards another in lust. Listen, if the end thereof is death, if, if there is no life, it is not God. Everything that God created at the beginning of the world, if you're Bible believing, then go read Genesis, okay? God said, be fruitful and multiply. If it cannot bear good fruit, which Jesus talked about, it will be hewn down. And that is what's taken place. We have put so much unrighteousness in the structure of America that we are now fixing to be hewn down in every way possible because we're going to receive the judgment of God. So if you are being deceived and you think that these things are okay, God's going to show you who he is in a mighty way. And if your heart's not in the right place, you're not going to turn back to the Lord. You're going to be given over to what Romans 1 says, a reprobate mind. God gives you over to these things because you have allowed deceit and manipulation to come into your heart instead of receiving the truth of the word and walking in it. And at the end of Romans 1, it even says that people that know the truth of the word <sighs> turn towards these things and do them anyways. Because since Adam and Eve, since the fall of man, that is our sin nature that we have been given now. We would rather give in to our lust than give in to God. So wide is, is the way and narrow is the gate. You know, many are called, but few are chosen. If you aren't walking steadfastly in the word of God, even the elect are going to be deceived. So you need to get your heart in the right place. Keep a, re a repentant heart before the Lord, um, a submissive heart. And I think another thing to share here that the Lord's putting on me, and then I'll finish the prophecy to share with you right now is that Many would rather go after the lust of their own hearts and the lust of their flesh than, than follow Christ and what Christ said to do, which is to tell people about the gospel of Jesus, which is to set people free from, from sin. Jesus came to set people from sin. He didn't die a horrific death. You know, he was just beaten and battered and, and torn to pieces to set us free from sin. Not to give us grace and mercy to live in sin. No, 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 no. That's that's the cheap grace version that, that I feel like the modern day society um, tries to believe. That, oh, well, I love Jesus and Jesus loves me and God is love so I can do these things. No, why don't you just slap him in the face? God loved you so much that he planned the Jesus, Revelation says, from the beginning of the foundation of the world. He knew man would fall, so he planned to send his son from the beginning of the world. But it's to set us free from sin. Jesus says, I came to set you free from it. <laughs> so you got to wrap your brain around that, that if you love your sin more than you love Jesus, then your heart's in the wrong place. When you truly fall in love with Jesus, the Bible says that God will give you a heart of flesh. He'll take the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. In your heart, your desire is to please the Lord and to please Jesus. 
and to live in a life of thankfulness for what he did for you by dying that horrific death. So if you believe in the Bible and you believe in Jesus, listen, Jesus says, no man comes to the Father except by me. The Father sent him, and that is our access, is by Jesus. So if you don't receive what Jesus did for you, you will have a place in the lake of fire. And <laughs> that is a hard statement to make, but many of us have family and friends that are being deceived, that are living in sin. And I'm telling you, I was there at one point, but even when I had walked away from God in my early 20s, I still had conviction because I was raised in the Word of God. I was raised to know truth. And I had a praying mama. I had a mama that told me, Ivy, you're living in sin. You're doing wrong. But she met me where I was and told me to get my life in order. And isn't that what Jesus did? It's not that we can't call people out. We need to do it in a loving way. But every time Jesus healed somebody, not every time, forgive me, but many times when Jesus would heal somebody, he would heal them. He would say, and he would say your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. So what is sin? <laughs> it's anything that separates you from God. If it's not the per if your life is not producing the fruits of the spirit, you are walking against the will of the Father. You are walking um, according to, to to the doctrine of man, according to what man says is okay. So you need to go read Romans one. And, and let me just mention this. If you add to or take away words from the Bible to suit your circumstances or to make you feel better about a situation or to believe that somebody's not going to go to hell, the Bible says that you are accursed. You bring a curse upon yourself if you add to or take away from the Bible. So that's in Revelation, I believe, 20. You can Google that. So you need to go look that up. So don't add to or take away. That's very important that we understand that in this this time in this season of deception that's going on in our nation okay so to, to finish the prophecy so to go back to the judgment and what we're walking through now with the inflation with the gas and and everybody's not knowing what's going on in the world what's going on is judgment because we have turned our hearts from god and i've been preparing in the you know and and when God gave me the, the prophecy, like I said, you can go back and watch it. He said that he will give his people supernatural provision. But if you are walking in unrighteousness, his hand of protection will be removed from you. But for the people of the Lord that trust our, our Heavenly Father, he's going to give us supernatural provision. But even so, from a financial standpoint, so that I don't pay, you know, twice as much for something later, I have been storing up canned goods, dry food, stuff that does last a long time. My family, we, my husband and I, we did that at the beginning of COVID also. It's just a smart move. It's just being wise. Um, you know, there's so much, so many scriptures in the Bible about being wise. And so I asked the Lord, what should I do? And he'll kind of usually put something on my heart but we also garden so grow your own food go, go buy you some seeds get them started in your house now and you can plant a fall garden so that if prices get astronomical you've got food in your backyard for free listen guys you can go to the dollar tree and get two packs of seeds for a dollar 25 seriously grow your own food it's super easy if you don't have a tiller you can't dig up the ground no big deal get you some dirt and put them in some pots. I do a lot of that behind my own house. We also have a large garden, but I put pots behind our house and I grow bell peppers. I just pulled carrots yesterday from a raised bed um, and potatoes. You Listen, if you've got some potatoes you've bought from the grocery store, let them eye up really good and then put them in the ground. They will grow potatoes. <laughs> so if you're concerned about the money and what you're gonna do about food, start growing your own food. Listen, there's thousands of people on YouTube that can show you videos about how to, to grow your own food. Super smart people that have been gardening longer than me, go do that, it's super easy. Um, get you some seeds and start planting stuff now, okay? Um, so like I said, we need to be prepared. The Lord gave me that at the beginning of the year also to be prepared and prepare my people. So I'm just sharing this, the rest of the prophecy with you. So I've been praying, God, what are we going to do when, when, are th when, when are things going down? Because I can sense it in the spiritual realm. That something major is fixing to happen to America. And God just keeps putting the word September 
in my spirit, he has given me a vision of the calendar of September, and I can see it in all caps, you know, black letters written at the top of the calendar that says September. So this year in September, and I'm not saying that, don't put words in my mouth, I don't know what's gonna take place, God hasn't showed me that yet, but I've asked him specifically when things are going to go down, and, and I just feel like we have, that he's sh shown me that, so I feel like we have until about September to get our, our house in order, to get our hearts in line with God, to um, get prepared physically. So um, just like Noah, the, the word that the Lord gave me was get in the boat. And so that's what Noah did. He, he took him a hundred years, he built the ark, and then they prepared and put everything in the ark. So you need to be getting prepared. And also don't be um, um, having anxiety about these things or to give into fear because that's of the enemy also as I said God's going to give us supernatural provision he's going to take care of us his people in this season but from a financial standpoint instead of paying you know ten dollars for something in a couple of months because there's not as much of it on the, on the shelf why not buy a couple of them now for half the price okay it's just it's just smart it's just wisdom so what I want you to do is just ask the Lord for wisdom, how you should prepare for your family for what's going on. And there's going to be things that we can't help, things that we can't control. But I do believe that God's going to lead his sheep during this season. And during this season, we are going to shine brighter in the darkness. Amen. So I hope you guys receive this word well. I know the Lord pressed upon me to release this. I didn't know I was going to. Um, I've pulled up at the store with my children in the back seat and thank the Lord they've been good long enough for me to release this to you. So I pray that this message doesn't scare you, but it encourages you. Know that God's going to take care of us. That's a part of the prophecy, but something in September is going to take shape. So just begin to, excuse me, prepare your heart. So I feel led to pray. So I'm going to pray for us and um, cut the video. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your mercy, and I thank you for your revelation. I thank you for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love you. I give you praise and glory and honor. Continue to humble my heart, and for the viewers, just, uh, just humble their hearts, Lord God, and show them who you are in a mighty way. Whatever they are believing for, standing for, Father God, I just pray that you will move in that situation and that circumstance. I pray that if they are dealing with anxiety and fear or worry or doubt, Lord God, that you will move in that situation. That you will just give them encouragement. That you will send people to encouragement, to encourage them. That you will just cast out any lies of the enemy that might be drawing them away from you that might be um, whispering that the enemy might be whispering lies into their ears lord god i just pray that those seeds will be plucked out and lord god that you will send people to plant good seeds that can take deep root in their heart to encourage them through the truth of your word so that they can be set free in the name of jesus father god i just pray that you will just lead God and direct your people during this season that we will turn our hearts to you, that we will seek you fervently and see you moving in this season and not be stressed out and worried about what the enemy is doing. But Lord God, that we will stand firm against the hand of the unrighteous, that we will rebuke the enemy and that we can stand on your word because it is truth and it is where freedom comes from. In Jesus' name, I pray these things. Father God, bless the viewers. Again, just draw their hearts to you, Holy Spirit. Lead God and direct us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. I love you guys. I pray this message blesses you. And I will see y'all soon.